it's also it takes me to my other policy area though because it's also the debate i think on climate which is to to what extent can you nudge large-scale corporations and governments uh, and individuals to behave differently, to make a meaningful impact on climate change? Or is it more like your sort of final third in the vaccination story, where you think we need to move more swiftly or more effectively to a particular kind of mandate or compulsion? So what's the balance between nudging and compelling when it comes to meaningful action on climate change? So I think there are two points. And one of the, we had many motivations for, for re- re- rewriting. I mean, what was a pretty successful book. I mean, our publisher thinks that we're nuts. Uh, they cannot think of any example where any author or authors were stupid enough to have done this. So, but you know, we understand about opportunity costs and there wasn't that much to do back, back in April, 2020. <laughs> uh, so, but climate change was one of the motivations because a point we wanted to make in this book is nudge can help any problem, but it's not the solution to every problem and maybe not the solution to any problem. So we believe that the first step for climate change has to be to get the prices right. So on that, we agree with every economist. People think that economists don't agree about anything. This is one thing, University of Chicago does a poll every couple of weeks of about 50 economists of various persuasions and 100% say we should either have a carbon tax or cap and trade. And notice this maintains choice. It's not like you can opt out of the tax, but you can decide, all right, it's going to now cost me three times more to drive my car or to heat and cool my home. How am I going to react to that? Same with firms. And the key to climate change, I think, is largely going to be at the organizational level. Individuals matter, but how we generate power, whether we build roads versus transit, what kind of cars we build, how we build them, these are all firm level decisions. Firms maximize profits first, We can get them to think about other things, but if you set the prices right, then they're going to react. And Elon Musk will have a lot of competition if the price of gasoline goes up by a factor of three. So now there's still room for nudging. You you can make it easier, my mantra, you know, on homeowners with smart thermostats, but they have to be smart. So many so-called smart thermostats have the same IQ as the old VHS video recorder, which most professors I know couldn't master. So, and the smart thermostats we've had uh, are baffling to me but really smart thermostats that know when you come and go and know your habits and know the price. So if we have time fluctuating utilities and they adjust, we can make life a lot simpler. We can, uh, when I'm out in California, if there's a fire risk, we get a text message. And, and by the way, we may turn your power off. So as one of my friends tweeted, she was preparing for that by eating all the ice cream. But uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's one way. So I think we need to get the prices right, but then we can use all the behavioral science. Now, one objection sometimes people make is that these are small. So 
telling people how much energy they use compared to their neighbors reduces usage by two, 3%, which is not huge. That's not gonna solve the problem. But every bit helps. Mm -hmm. President Obama used to like to say, better is good. So reducing energy by two or 3%, that's better, that's good. So let's take every little bit that we can through automation and uh, other means like firms, we, we advocate making public emissions by every firm. That in some other environmental issues has proven to be quite successful. And firms will, they don't like being shamed. And uh, I, I, I think there's a lot we can do, but uh, I, I sound like a University of Chicago economist sometimes when I talk about this because we got to get the price right. <laughs>